Hello and welcome. Yesterday, the European currency extended losses against the dollar as expected. As I noted earlier, the euro had no chance of recovering following data on US inflation. As I result, the market experienced another sell-off. The British pound also slid a bit. Britain's economy shrank by 0.1% in March. On an annual basis, the country's economy is expanded by 8.7% in the first quarter of 2022, slightly below forecast of 9%. On a quarterly basis, UK GDP grew by 0.8% in the first three months of 2022, slowing from a 1.3% expansion in Q4 and below market forecast of 1%. In addition, statistics on trade balance and industrial production turn out to be rather downbeat. Thus, rising living cost in Britain will lead to a broad decline in retail sales and increased household savings, which in turn will result in a further economic contraction and a heightened risk of a recession. Data on US labor market released yesterday was upbeat, which allowed the greenback to continue its bullish run. Today's macroeconomic calendar includes statistics on consumer price in France and Spain as well as data on industrial production in the euro area for March. The latter is expected to decrease but will hardly have a severe impact on the already weak European currency. In the second half of the day, the University of Michigan will release its Consumer Sentiment Index and Gauge of Inflation Expectations. U.S. Consumer Sentiment is forecast to come in at 64.1 in May against the previous reading of 65.2. Besides, some FOMC members are set to speak today. From a technical point of view, the euro-dollar pair hit a new low around 1.0354. While the market is in a correction phase, I think it would be a wise decision to go short amid a false breakout at 1.0420 following downbeat economic indicators from the euro area. The principal goal of Burr's will be to regain control over 1.0377 if the price fixes below this level and test it from the bottom up, an additional sell signal will be created. In this case, the euro will most likely slide to 1.0341 and 1.0306. Notably, short positions below 1.0377 can be considered only after the MACD on the hourly chart returns to the zero line. In the event of a steep drop on the first half of the day followed by formation of a divergence, it will be possible to open long positions on the rebound at 1.0341 or 1.0306. The point is that divergence may well trigger an upward correction. If burst trading activity at 1.0420 is subdued, bulls are able to protect 1.0377 and the price forms a false breakout at this level, the volume of long positions will increase. Price consolidation above 1.0420 will lead to a jump to 1.0463 and 1.0520 at the levels of 1.0520 and 1.0464 traders will be able to open short positions on the rebound with a view to catching an intraday correction of 25-30 pips. Meanwhile, the British pound continues its range-bound trading a false breakout at 1.2230 to 1.2235 will create a strong signal. In this case, Burrs will make every effort to break through a one-year low. Price fixation below 1.2170 will case another sell-off in pound sterling to 1.2122 and 1.2064. At the mark of 1.2064, it will be possible to go long on the rebound counted on the intraday correction of 35-40 pips. 
Long positions at 1.2122 and 1.2170 can be considered only amid a false breakout if the price consolidates above 1.2130 and tested for the top down the British pound will have a chance of relying to 1.2282 and probably 1.2334 at this mark I recommend going short on the rebound with a view to catching an intraday correction of 35 40 pips. Short positions at 1.2282 will be relevant only in the event of a false breakout. Thus, even an upward correction to this mark is unlikely to stem a bearish mood. On the contrary, this level will be a good entry point for bears to increase their short selling positions. Good luck and have a nice weekend.